Hello, welcome to Stone Magpie. If you're really into diamond painting in a big way, you may already have a logbook. This is something that I've not really done before and I am going to do it slightly differently today. So stay tuned even if you do currently have a logbook of your own. Last year, I saw lots of YouTube creators reviewing their diamond paintings that were completed during the year. And I thought, I can't keep track of what I've finished because I'm not logging my diamond paintings currently. So I got myself a logbook. However, I've decided I am not using this logbook and I'll explain why. I want to do it in a different way. Don't want to complicate it, <laughs> but to me, this sort of book just doesn't work for what I've got in mind. I bought this one on Amazon. It is a basic log book and it shows lots of details. There are a number of reasons. The first being that um, the photo for me isn't big enough on the page. It will fit the Diamond Art Club stickers. However, if we move to the bigger sticker, it doesn't fit. If we use our lowers, it's a bit, bit too small. So that was reason number one. And then I noticed there's a typo in the book and that would just drive me insane that it's uh, <laughs> not got a G on diamond painting. Apparently they think it's diamond painting. Diamond painting. <laughs> And there's information in this logbook that I just, I'm not really that bothered about. Um, some of the details on here, order number, tracking number, etc. For me, it just isn't really useful information that I want to keep. So I decided to simplify it. Also, the main, main, main reason is having a book like this with the static pages means we can't swap the pages around. Once we fill in some details, we go to the next page and fill in the next diamond painting and so on. However, for me, I wanted to be able to see the diamond paintings I'd started, the diamond paintings I'd unboxed, things like that. So I've had my thinking cap on and this is what I have come up with. This is a binder. I got it on Amazon. Everything that I'm showing you today can be found on Amazon. And the links I'll put in the description box below so you can find them easily. Now I chose this one because it's got some extras with it. And I like the color. <laughs> So this is a press stud opening. So you can see that there are six ring binders in this folder. It's got some pockets on the side so we can put handy things in there. And turning to the back, there's another big pocket and a pen holder. The inserts that come with the folder are notepad paper. There is a plastic Ziploc and they have dividers and this specifically I really liked this file for. There are also some coloured tab stickers and some tabs with the ruler down the side as well. These are peel off sticker type tabs. So a really nice comprehensive file and my thought was that I would put the note paper at the back useful for any extra notes. So I would just take a note sheet out as and when I need it. I will use the Ziploc bag for storing all of my stickers that I haven't got round to log in yet. So I would zip that open, pop them in. So you know if you're in a rush, and you haven't got time to log your diamond painting as soon as you get it. That's a nice way to store those ready. And then the dividers. I am going to keep them into separate categories. So I am going to 
put details for diamond paintings that I have received, diamond paintings that I've unboxed, diamond paintings that I have started, diamond paintings that I have finished. Now, in the finished category, I am then going to divide it again, just using some card. I have got some holographic card here, A4 size. I'll cut that down to an A5 because this binder is an A5 size and I will separate the different years. So I will know which year I finished which painting. Hooray! And I'll be able to move the pages down as I go. So I'll know which ones I've unboxed. I'll know which ones I've started without having to keep flicking through a book to try and find the information. Do you like it? <laughs> I'm really pleased with this idea. I think it's going to work really well for me. However, you may say, well, you don't have any pages in the book. So how are you going to do that? Well, there are two ways. You could, if you wanted, and you've got one of these books already, just cut out or pull out a page in your log. Trim it down and then you have the information. Now I think normally in these logs you would have the information side by side so that page would relate to one diamond painting and so on throughout. However, I want to have one diamond painting per sheet because I want to be able to move them. So for me I'm going to have this as the front page and this as the detail page behind. So, as I say, you would just get some scissors or a guillotine and trim it down. Like so. To fit it in the binder. Ah, you may say, but we haven't got any holes. <laughs> well, I have a solution for that too. You can either purchase the plastic wallets and put them in there. Oh, that would be very posh. Or you can do as I do and get one of these hole punches. This hole punch is by Rapesico and it is an adjustable hole punch. You can see there are six holes here. It is a lockable hole punch so you just slide that up and it unlocks this mechanism. And on the back here is the gubbings as we say where you set the different sizes. So I have a smaller file of facts that I use for my diaries and that is a mini. So I would set the settings to mini and it would close in those holes ready to hole punch. This is an A5. Now, however, what I have found with this file is that it is slightly off kilter. So you would need to set the guide here to be able to place your paper in. Now, because we're creating an extra hole, it needs to be slightly higher than what it looks. So instead of doing it centrally like this, it'll need to come down a little bit, give you space to create an extra hole. So we click that. Then as you can see, We have the three lined up, we've got an extra hole here and we've got two here. So we need another hole there. The way to do this is to use this as a guide. So we need to put the paper back in and these last two holes need to line up with the first two holes of the hole punch. Just guide it in, use judgment, click and There we have it. So that is one way to create the pages for your file. However, as I mentioned earlier, I don't really want all of this information on my sheet and I would like a bigger photo. So what I have done is typed up my own sheet just on Word, a Word document, really simple form, really simplified it down, did a nice big picture here. I'll show you an example of two ways that you can go about putting the inserts in. 
Here's a test sheet that I ran. I did print it one-sided, then decided to try and double-side copy it, and it ended upside down. So, for this example, just pretend that there's nothing on this side of the paper. If you wanted to, you could just fold your A4 sheet in half and have your page like so. Punch some holes in the side and you've got your piece of paper. Let's do that. Once you've got this guide already set up, of course, it's a lot easier to then continue with the rest. It's just this bit of faffiness. That's a shame that it didn't quite line up. But once you get used to it, as you can see, it's not too big an issue. So there we have our first sheet. Now, one other idea I did think about was if you wanted to, you could photocopy the colours on the other side of this sheet. If you do it this way, you could have the photocopy of something like this sitting there. So if ever you wanted to refer to what colours were in the diamond painting, you would have it all ready in your file. Not sure if I'm going to do that yet because I have made some double side pages and I'm going to cut mine in half. And the reason really is because doing it this way, I think I'll fill up my file really quickly because it's like using two bits of paper rather than just one. Does that make sense? I'm hoping I'm making sense here. That would be using two pieces of paper in effect for one diamond painting by doing it this way I've got I'll have two pieces of paper but for two diamond paintings I have also if you noticed created the documents so that there is more margin down this side if you see the example that I did earlier because you you lose some of the the paper in the hole punch taking it from the book so when I created this, I created it so that there's lots of space down the side. I think it looks neater. Because I am cutting the paper, I wanted a, to be a bit more accurate than scissors. I thought, you know, my scissors are not that accurate. So this is the guillotine that I bought on Amazon for this job. And it's useful for all sorts of paper crafts too, cutting out bits and bobs. So. This is just a simple slide blade and it does have this guide that pulls out to create more of an accurate measure. And all you need to do is pop the piece of paper in between the ruler. And I know that an A4 sheet in half to make A5 is around about 15 minus 2 millimetres. So I don't know if you can see that there. I will zoom that in so you can see there. And this guide creates much more length to be able to measure the paper and make sure it's straight. This is a double cutting blade so it cuts up and down. So you just press on the blade, slide it up and back and it does a really lovely, neat cut. So there we are, my first two pages for the file. So I will make quite a few of these with my guillotine. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a few of the Diamond Art Club stickers. So what do we do if the kit comes without these lovely sticker sheets? Well, for example, Spongebob Budget Buy from Amazon. And well, what I did, I took photos of the kits that didn't have the sticker sheets. You can see Spongebob here, cut it out. And what I'll do is stick this on the front. Now I could have made these bigger because I've got my lovely big photo window now. 
However, if you don't have the facility to do this, you could just draw a simple outline drawing just to give you an idea of what the kit is. It doesn't have to be really exact. So for this one, we've got SpongeBob. He has a square, he's got a big smile, two teeth, two big eyes. <laughs> There we are. Look at that for an artwork. Can't you tell what it is straight away? <laughs> well, it would give you an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, as I say, as long as you could tell. I think when we buy these diamond paintings, they tend to speak to us, so I think we would know. So, ideas for you here, but I do think that's probably the one that I will go with, taking pictures. So all I need to do now is actually complete the sheets and get them into my file. So for SpongeBob, I have unboxed him. So this sheet would go, not at the front here, because at the front, I've actually done a really posh diamond painting log belongs to Suzanne, because that's the header sheet as it were. Um, so I will hole punch that and get that in. And I did just fold that over so that one is a double sheet, like a nice title sheet. Posh. <laughs> so we're going to have received. Yes, I received it. We're going to have unboxed. And that is where SpongeBob will sit because I have unboxed SpongeBob, but I haven't started him. You could also make your own categories, of course. You could say unboxed, kitted up, started, completed, you know, so you can play with those tabs a little bit. And what I'm going to do is have these and I'm going to write on what the categories are so that they're removable if I decide to change my mind. So that's what I'm going to do here is point it in the right direction of where we're going to go. I might even use these to do that with if I can write on these tabs here. I still need to have a bit of a play with this and a bit of an experiment and I'm sure it'll evolve as I get new ideas of how to use it. But that is a really good starting point and I hope that you agree. And I really hope that you like this idea. Let me know if you're going to adapt it and do your logging slightly differently, whether you've never really bothered logging and now you're interested in doing so, or whether you're still quite happy to use the logbooks because they do, of course, keep everything nice and secure, all of that information in one nice, tidy place. Thank you so much for watching today. I've really enjoyed showing you my idea of how to log our diamond paintings, and I hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care. Bye.